talking about relaying relevant STEM research. Um, so I have a, a bit of a snippet from one of the papers that Yuki worked on, um, on the regulation of tear gas. So the first um, tip in this would be to not assume that policymakers have previous knowledge of the subject. So we might all be somewhat familiar with what tear gas is, but it might it's probably still a good idea to have an explanation of what it is, why it's dangerous, or why it's potentially dangerous, what's the study, what studies have um, discussed this. Um, so they, they talk about that in a bit of depth here. Um, I know that in science, we talk a lot about like jargon and we talk about how we can't assume that a lot of people know terms that we're using in our research. And I had this really funny thing the other day where I was talking to my boyfriend of like a long time now who's been around for my research and neuroscience. So I was talking about neurons. And then after a year, I realized that he thought I was talking about neutrons. And I guess I never established my baseline. Um, so yeah, I think we really, I think we talk about it a lot to the point where we kind of like stop thinking about it because it becomes noise. Um, but yeah, basic, basic terms, you still got to establish your baseline. Yeah. Yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so the next would be, and yeah, you could just touch on this, but explain all of the necessary STEM concepts, acronyms, key terms that are critical to this the discussion. So um, here I've underlined a few things that they did. Um, they explained what the acronyms were. Um, they explained what tear gas was. They explained what the noxious effects that would be induced from tear gas exposure would be. Um, and, and then the next thing would be, just like you <laughs> said, cut out jargon. So some of the things in this paper that I saw were um, like the first, in the first line, lacrimator. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I didn't know what that was. A lot of people might not, but it just means that it causes tear production basically. So I think in using words that are more understandable to like the lay audience saying like tear gas cause it, like is a tear producing agent um, would be a better, maybe a better choice of word for um, a policymaker. And, uh, and then also when they talk about receptors, the specific types of receptors might not be as interesting to a policymaker. So maybe that would be something that um, could be taken out or explained further. Um, and then also in pain sensing nerves, that was a, an, a good example of using common words that would be understandable rather than nociceptors. <laughs> is that the right word? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, this is just an example of ways that um, you could cut out some jargon um, and, and only can include conclusions from your research and indicate what the results mean for your audience's lives and concerns. So um, they did a good job of you know, condensing all of the research they did from these papers into like the conclusions from that and the takeaways and um, what that means in the, in the last um, circle here, what that means for um, the audience that tear gas shouldn't be assumed to be safe for the general public. Um, and then avoid qualifiers and talk about what is certain. So this is just to say that like in science, we often want to be like, this is, we only have a certain percent of certainty, but in policy, you want to just focus on what is certain because that's what's going to um, be important to the policymakers. Um, and then if possible and helpful, use visuals, figures, or tables. So uh, just an example of that, um, this is a big paragraph with a lot of numbers. It might be hard to read, and it's, it's basically just about the change in renewable generation in New England over a certain amount of time. Um, so one way to present this would be a table that's a little bit easier on the eye, maybe a little easier to interpret. 
um, probably even better than that would be um, just a figure to talk about or to show the um, change in uh, renewable generation. Um, and if, if possible, it's also good to just condense everything into the key takeaways like shown in the bottom left here, um, where it's all of that information is sort of condensed over the past five years, the total change uh, in the generation. So that's what I have on relaying.